Marijuana. We now have five places in the United States where marijuana is legal for recreational purposes. Alaska, Oregon, Colorado, Washington, and DC. But if you listen to people like Kevin Sabat, the nation's leading anti-marijuana campaigner, disinformation is a terrible thing. He and others say that for every one dollar a state generates in tax revenue from the legal sale of marijuana, it costs ten dollars in social ills like increased visits to hospital and increased car crashes. But here's the thing. Science is great, it's a method of investigation, and so when people like Kevin make these sort of claims, we can use the scientific method to figure out if they're true or not. So let's have a look at what the data says about legal marijuana. So is legalizing recreational marijuana good for society? Well, not if you listen to anti-marijuana campaigners like Patrick Kennedy. He says, for every $1 we collect from state and federal taxes on alcohol and tobacco, we spend $10 to address problems stemming from their use. There was no reason to believe marijuana will pay for itself either. The implication here is that for every dollar that we generate in revenue from marijuana in the states where it's now legal, we'll have to pay $10 to fix things like mental health issues and crime. So let's have a look at what the data actually says from those states and see if we can work out if Patrick's on the right track. So the two states that have legalized marijuana for the longest, Washington and Colorado, have already raised over $200 million in state revenue related to marijuana sales. Now, that's not gonna fix any budget shortfall Falls, but it's better than zero, so good for them. Except that if you listen to anti-marijuana campaigners, they say that those states are going to have $2 billion in additional social problems that they're gonna to have to pay for. So let's have a look at the data. So one line that a lot of anti-marijuana campaigners use that if we legalize marijuana, we're gonna have all these stone drivers causing fatal crashes and everyone will die on the roads. But let's have a look at the publicly available information that the Colorado Department of Transportation publishes on their website. Here is the number of car crashes with fatalities since 2002. And as you can see, there hasn't been any significant increase in the amount of fatal crashes either since medical marijuana was legalized in that state or since recreational marijuana was legalized in that state. There is a small increase in the last two years, the number of fatal crashes, but the data suggests this is just due to an increase in the amount of drivers that are on the roads. So nothing here in the data to suggest that the legalization of marijuana has had any real impact on road fatalities. Let's look at another one, teen use of marijuana. The Youth Risk Behaviour Survey found that high school use of marijuana actually fell by 11% between 2009 and 2011, a period where uh, recreational use of marijuana in Colorado was prevalent and medical marijuana was legal. There's been absolutely no data to suggest that the switch over to legal recreational marijuana use has had any impact on teen or high school use of marijuana. In fact, the Chicago governor, John Hickenlooper, admitted himself that there's been no increase in the amount of high schoolers and teens who are using marijuana since it became recreationally available. One of the reasons why this might be the case is that you have to be carded in Colorado if you're trying to get marijuana. They have to prove that you're over 21. And drug dealers don't really care. So now that most of the marijuana in that state is being provided legally, it's only being given to people over the age of 21, and there's less incentive for drug dealers to be prevalent and dealing to youth. And finally, what about overall use? A lot of anti-marijuana campaigners say that if it becomes more legal and cheaper, we're gonna see this huge skyrocket in use. Well, we can test that too. A study released recently by the Colorado Marijuana Enforcement Division found that legalization has had no effect on consumption rates. In fact, in 2010, the percentage of Coloradans reporting past month and past year consumption actually fell when medical marijuana was freely available, whereas in the rest of the nation, it increased. Now, the data for 2014 isn't yet available, but what we can see is that making marijuana more accessible through legal pathways seems to have either no effect or a negative effect on the amount of people who are consuming marijuana. If alcohol and tobacco and pharmaceutical drugs are available to the population, there seems to be no financial, social, or even an ethical case as to why marijuana shouldn't be available as well. Hi everyone, I'm Jade Lovell, resident science nerd on the Young Turks Network. You're watching SciQ and we know you don't want to miss an episode, so please click the subscribe button down below.